Okay, I'm going to give just a quick uh, introduction and in how to use the Excel add-ins and in particular how to use the names of variables in Microsoft Excel and how to document a spreadsheet as you go along in using these add-in functions. So uh, if you have the add-ins loaded and, and they're active, uh, the thermodynamic add-ins will give you a splash screen such as you see uh, here when you open Excel or when you activate the add-ins. But uh, once you have those available then you can use them at any time uh, during the Excel session. So first of all, uh, just to make the screen a little larger here, hopefully you can see that uh, pretty good. Um, the basic idea behind this documentation scheme is in this first column A, uh, you'll put labels or names of variables really uh, in this first column A. And the corresponding values for those will go into uh, the second column, that's column B. <clears throat> and so we'll make use of the name manager to assign uh, the labels to the variables, uh, the values, so that you can use them in equations. Uh, the third column, column C, would be used for the units of the quantity that's listed in column B. And then finally in column D, the fourth column, uh, should contain a a note or indication of where that value came from or possibly generally would have a copy of the formula uh, that's underneath the cell in column B so that someone who's looking at the calculation can see what's there. So I typically won't put uh, headings on these uh, columns because I'm always going to use them but I'll, I'll put them uh, here just for reference, that column A would contain a label or a variable name. Uh, column B would contain a value or formula. Column C would contain the units of that quantity. And then column D would contain uh, either a copy of the formula or a comment of some type. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, see how that might work. So if I wanted to work a thermodynamics problem, I might have some things given like uh, pressures and temperatures, or I might have some things given like, um, oh, I don't know, uh, quality. And so I typically will use a letter, single letter, to designate a value. And you'll notice I put P underscore 1 and T underscore 1 instead of just P1 and T1. Uh, there is a reason for that. Um, the underscore to separate the, the P from the 1. Because if I just put the number, excuse me, the label P1, no underscore, uh, and I subsequently try to use that in a formula. Uh, sometimes Excel thinks I'm referring to the cell P1 rather than uh, the name P1. So I've just gotten in the habit of using um, the underscore to separate the subscript number from the from the letter. So uh, we may have some uh, values like um, 2,000 kPa. 200 degrees Celsius and 89 percent. So let's just say that this is a given information. And now we want to um, calculate some things. So for example, if we want to know the enthalpy at state one, we can do that by using the add-in functions that I talked about. Uh, once you get used to the names of these, you can specify them fairly readily, but I'll use the drop-down box here to find them. That I'm going to look for the X-STEAM properties, and I'm interested in uh, enthalpy as a function of pressure and temperature, since that's what was given here. So uh, I indicate that, and I'll go ahead and 
put this and you'll see what happens. I want to use P1 as a name and T1 as a name. And you can see immediately um, that these names aren't recognized because I haven't defined them as yet. So um, I'll go ahead and, and put them in here and, and you'll, we'll have to fix it up in just a minute. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to have some names for these. And to define the names for these values, you need to highlight the name cells, but also the value cells that are next to them. So once you have the labels in the first column and the values in the second column highlighted, you come to the formula tab in uh, Excel 2010. And on that formula tab, uh, there's the name manager block here in the very center of the screen at the top and uh, there's a automatic or shortcut link here that says create from selection so if you already have the labels in one column or row and the corresponding values in the adjacent column or row you can just click on create from selection and uh, Excel makes a guess as to where are the labels and where are the values and he wants you to confirm that the names are found in the left column. And so when you do that, then those names are uh, defined. So now if I go back and look at this uh, formula that's underneath um, this cell, it still has a pound value in there, meaning that he doesn't understand the results. And you can see uh, why that uh, he took those as labels, P1 and T1, or I should say string variables. When I take away those quote marks, you can see that the symbol P underscore 1 and T underscore 1 um, are shown in color, and then you can see a corresponding value that has a uh, same color uh, perimeter or, or um, border around it, showing the, the corresponding value. So now uh, P1 refers to uh, this this number and T1 refers to this number. Okay, and so uh, that would be the value. Again, you have all of these decimal places. Uh, we really can't believe all of those decimal places. I probably would shorten the number of decimal places that are shown there. And then also show this formula. So I'm going to copy this formula. Uh, which I can do with a shortcut. And now I want to paste this formula in that cell. And so now we see that we have the value and the formula visible for anybody who comes to look at this. Likewise, we could add additional formulas, for example, if we needed to know um, the uh, entropy at state 1. We can calculate that by S as a function of P and T for H2O. Again, we know pressure 1 and we know temperature 1. Uh, sorry, temperature 1. And again, you can see the color coding appears, and that shows that uh, those uh, values are, are defined, and we can look and see those values and, and verify that they are correct. So this will give us the entropy at that uh, condition or state. And we can cut and paste the formula over here. What I'm doing here is if I hit F2 key, it throws the uh, formula up into the cell. If I hit the keystroke shift home, it brings it all the way back. And if I hit the keystroke control C, it copies it to the clipboard. So, so now if I hit enter and navigate to where I want to paste this, I put a little tick mark and then I just press control V and that throws the number off the, the formula off the clipboard uh, into that cell. 
So again, that control, that sequence is uh, F2, uh, shift home, control C, enter, and then navigate to the cell where you want to paste it. Put a tick mark to indicate a comment or a, a text string, and then hit control V. Okay, and now I type in the units here, kilojoules per kilogram per degree K. Okay, so that's just a quick overview of uh, using the Excel add-ins, but also the three uh, four-column format for uh, documentation. And um, this provides a very uh, readable uh, type of format that you can go back and look at the spreadsheet and understand uh, the steps that have been taken.